Regeneration in its true definition has the power to be absolutely transformative. And if we take a kind of macro glance, we're not just looking at regeneration through the lens of agriculture, but we're looking at it in the context of what it means for businesses everywhere. Um, and for me, regeneration really captures this shift from doing less harm to in fact, how do we begin to do more good? And at surface level, that might sound really simple, but that is in fact a radical departure from where business is coming from and, and indeed the purpose that business was born from. You know, the old model of business is largely premised on the exploitation and commodification of communities and of nature. This new model of regeneration needs to be based on the protection and of course the restoration of communities and nature with a focus on what has already been lost. So for me, regeneration is an invitation for companies to actually shift the goalposts. You know, the goal of your, your product, your service shouldn't simply be to get in the hands of a consumer, but to in fact look beyond and think, how is that product or service a vehicle for solving a larger problem? Now that problem might be deforestation or species extinction or energy use in the home, food waste, um, fast fashion. How is your product a means of solving that problem rather than contributing to it? And through that lens, I think regeneration poses an opportunity to think about sustainability in a truly holistic and integrated way. Now, where regeneration might be exploited, um, to your question, Alex, is if it becomes a vehicle for greenwashing, right? Um, and also if, if companies use it as a means to kind of tokenize their sustainability efforts to say, well, we're protecting that plot of land over there or buying up that forest, which we've seen a lot of in this kind of outpouring of net zero commitments. Um, but instead saying, actually, how are we questioning the way that we do business? How are we questioning our very model of creating value in society? How are we thinking about this from an intersectional lens? And when we do that, I think regeneration is an incredible invitation for innovation and, and true sustainability. I would flip that question on its head and I would say, are companies willing to pay more? Are companies willing to prioritize people and the planet over profit in pursuit of infinite growth? To your point around policy and legislation, are governments willing to subsidize regenerative practice over unsustainable polluting and monoculture agriculture? So I do feel that continuing to put the entire onus of responsibility on the consumer to spend more um, is both ineffective in the lens of the the urgency of the climate and ecological crisis maybe we could have taken a more incremental approach you know 30 or 40 years ago but you know now we're looking in the face of a crisis already disproportionately impacting communities around the world and again putting that lens on consumers can further be a means of um, fueling social inequity um, because those who are already socioeconomically disadvantaged or might be facing the direct impacts of environmental racism are then also expected to pay a premium on goods so that they can have healthier, more sustainable options. Um, now, that being said, if we reframe the lens of a consumer to think about the people who are walking outside of those corridors of power, the people who aren't in the boardroom or um, who aren't in policy making spaces, I absolutely see these stakeholders, us, as an incredible driver for change. That is inclusive, inclusive of people who are in the supply chain and the value chain, um, the incredible frontline communities and farmers who, you know, big companies are absolutely dependent on, but also, you know, young people lending their voices to this movement, backing that up with action, um, and other unlikely kind of suspects who are driving forward that change agenda. Um, but to reiterate, we, we can't wait for consumer demand to be that driving force. And I hear that a lot interfacing with business leaders. It's like, you know, the consumer is God. We'll do the, the positive thing when the consumer asks for it. Or we'll change our practice when our competitor over there does it. And then we'll just do the bare minimum to outcompete them. We need to take a much more transformative um, change maker approach to rethinking these systems. And I think in a climate where much of the narrative is dominated by what's not working, um, what we're reacting against. Regeneration serves as an incredible beacon for what we should truly be working toward.
that's a slightly loaded question. Um, I suppose it, it it's a question of you know responsibility. Um, you know, I. It's obvious that we are not only facing a climate crisis, but that we are living through one. And the decisions, the choices that we make within the next 10 years have the potential to impact future generations indefinitely. You know, we're on the precipice of climate tipping points where companies have a huge role to play, where policy has an enormous role, where civil society is absolutely critical. And so I wouldn't want to point the finger at one stakeholder group and say, well, it's all up to you. It's, it's really how can we do as much as possible and particularly in the context of companies avoiding greenwashing, uh, you know, how can we invest in doing the right thing rather than spending gross marketing budgets on being seen to do the right thing? So it's really around intentionality and, and that kind of radicalism. And again, where regeneration is incredibly promising is in response to what climate scientists and researchers everywhere are telling us, which is that, you know, we're hurtling toward this cliff um, and it's not enough to just, you know, put our foot on the brake, right? It's not enough to just stop emissions. We need to actually begin to draw down the carbon emissions that have already been emitted. And, you know, I often hear, you know, kind of techno utopianists from Silicon Valley talking about the latest carbon sequestering technology, you know, enshrouded in billion dollar patents. And it's like, yeah, the best carbon technology we've had and have, will ever have is, of course, trees, right? protecting nature there is so much promise in nature-based solutions and so you know companies need to take a moment take a pause and think about how are we continuing to drive the problem largely you know deforestation monoculture cropping um, species extinction but not just okay how do we press the brakes on that but how do we regain what has already been lost and what we have contributed to the destruction of through our business practice No pressure. Um, I would say we are in a culture where we have divorced ourselves from nature and yet we are nature and the decisions we make in one part of the world are the decisions that we make to ourselves. Now regeneration and sustainability don't need to be a tick boxing exercise that feels like a great bureaucratic burden. They are the best invitation we have to deliver the world that we know is possible and to rekindle and refoster our connection to the earth, to the land, and of course to ourselves.